Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. We are going to take it. Damn. I just got a new subscriber while I was... What's happening? Chief Penner? I got a new, two new subscribers while I was trying to record a new video here. Ha! Huh, that's awesome, man. Thank you, guys. Really, really nice start, I gotta say. Uh, where was I? I was going to talk about um, Andy Pants' new video here. Uh, the guy has just started to follow. And uh, I think it makes uh, interesting uh, videos. So we're going to have a little look here. Okay. Hey, guys, this is going to be a short video. I just have to get some stuff off my chest. So um, BlackRock is a trillion dollar investment company that is invested everywhere uh, from media to cars to oil to everything. Um, and yet they keep saying that they're pushing for diversity. Um, you know, they've got these ESG scores that they're pushing. They, they say that they're, they're all about diversity. They're pushing for diversity. But have you ever wondered why they keep emphasizing our differences? Yeah, that's the good old divide and conquer method that's been applied since the birth of mankind, more or less. They just want to keep us separated and by keeping us separated they have to first create problems and make sure that we are fighting amongst ourselves because if we don't fight amongst ourselves we would actually figure shit out we would actually be able to overthrow governments but that ain't gonna happen because the state of where we at right now is yeah it's uh, far down on the bottom unfortunately but uh, hopefully things might change in the future soon like if they really want us to come together, wouldn't you, in order to make people come together, you downplay differences. You don't emphasize differences, but instead what they do is they have ESG scores. They hire uh, diversity training coaches and people to go into these companies to emphasize our differences. The, the way you get people to come together is by uh, de-emphasizing yeah. our differences. That's actually also, a really, really good point. I remember this uh, interview with the BlackRock CEO that I, I prepared a clip here for you. He talks about how they are enforcing the behavior. You, you now make a point of that's, a, that's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are going to have to change. And this is one thing we're, gonna, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors. And at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. 54% uh, of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. And it, if it, it, you know, what we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? We're doing the same thing. And so it's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting, it is development, as Ken said. And ultimately, it's still going to take time, but I am just as much shocked as Ken is that we have not seen more opportunities and we're going to have to force change. That's crazy. I've never understood why you want to force gender or race. There's no point of it. There should always be one thing and only one thing to force. And that's how good someone is at doing their job. I've heard about the latest thing that they are enforcing gender and race into pilot programs. So it's more important to have a certain skin color than actually being able to fly a plane as good as possible. That's, that's some crazy shit in order to get us to come together. So I just want to first point out that how strange it is that black BlackRock keeps emphasizing our differences as a culture. And so one of the things that they've done is they've taken a group um, like the LGBT LGBT group, which is only 3% of the American population. And they <laughs> look at these people. How how can they stand there and look so proud? H how is it possible? Who are going to take them seriously? I mean, these are people that actually believe in that Satan loves you and this is a uh, 
it has something to do with the LGBTQ uh, blah 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 community as well. I I have no clue how those two things found each other, but I guess one nut job found another job nut job, and that's more more or less what happened here. What kind of people are gonna see them and say that this is actually might be something they might be onto something here why haven't i thought about this satan loving me yeah yeah i think uh, i'm gonna try this out honey uh we are going to go to this satanic uh, ritual uh, next week and i found uh, found uh, the invite here uh th this might be something for a family all right <laughs> the lgbt group which is only three percent of the american population and they have put them to the forefront, um, not in order to get us to come together, not in order to uh, minimize our differences, but they're emphasizing the things that make us different. And so, uh, uh, and, and if you don't think that there's a satanic tone here, um, there's all kinds of alignments between devil worship and, and, and Satanism and the LGBTQ movement. Um, on the right here was just something, okay. this is random, but uh, Celine Dion I saw recently was pushing for a for her, her satanic what celine dion she's okay well okay why i'm not surprised why am i not surprised the most it's like I, you you hear a lot of stuff about celebrities being into this satanic bullshit and uh it goes hand in hand with all the pedophiles and stuff that is uh going on within those circles so uh, I guess I'm not surprised trying to groom, groom children into this uh, mess as well. Clothing line for kids, which is absolutely bonkers, insane. But first off, I just want to begin with that thought. Oh, I just noticed. You can't see uh, Andy Pan's logo here. This is his logo, by the way. If they really want us to come together, why would they emphasize our differences? And the reason why is because they make money when we're divided. True. They make more money when we're when we're divided and we can't. And the big number two, two reason is that if they can keep playing us off of each other, we can never come together and actually solve anything. We're just like livestock to them. They just try to figure out more ways to exploit us and earn money on us, you know. This is why Morgan Freeman in a random video I saw recently, he he told this guy who was pushing the Black Lives Matter shit, mm. he said, stop talking about our differences. Yeah. And Morgan Freeman nailed it. And that's got to be the best quote that's, that's ever been said in in the history about racism. Um, going to listen to the clip here. I bet most of you heard it, but it's so good. You can listen to it over and over again. Black History Month, you find ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do you do with yours? What, which month is white history month? <laughs> no, well, no, no, come on. Tell me. Well, the, I'm Jewish. Okay. Which I'm month Jewish. is Jewish history month? Uh, there isn't one. Oh. Oh. Why not? Yeah. Well, you want one? No, no. No. I, I, right. I, I, I don't either. I don't want a black history month. Exactly. Because why would they? I mean, he's a person like anybody else out there. So why why celebrate that they are different because of uh, skin color, right? It's stupid. It's ridiculous. Black history is American history. How are we going to get rid of racism? And stop still... talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. I know um, you as Mike Wallace, right. you know me as Morgan Freeman. You know. Damn right. And that's the thing. They don't want us to stop talking about it. They want us to... Ladies and gentlemen, Denzel Washington. Sorry about that. <laughs> they want us to keep talking about it. And that's what happened around, I think it was over a decade ago. Uh, we saw a real uprise within uh, media channels. They got actually told to start talking more and more about racism and that's the way it grew it grew to into a much bigger problem than it actually is and now the big corporations and groups they're actually earning a lot of money on this matter because uh 20 years ago 
people didn't talk about racism like this. It, it, it's been like a little snowball that's been pushed down a hill by the corporations and media. And they are making sure that this snowball goes and turns bigger and bigger and bigger. And this guy had nothing to say because the way to get people to come together is actually to not talk about our differences, but to emphasize our similarities. But guys, uh, uh, we're in the woke apocalypse right now. We are in the mm. darkest woke apocalypse timeline. And like, look at the shit that is coming out in 2024. Yeah, it is these woke, pagan, satanic game developers who are who are saying, Oh, every character has to be a black lesbian. Let's well, the thing is here that well, this one thing that they push to have uh, black people more and more into movies and games and history shows and everything. They actually put black people in places where they absolutely not should be like a Viking King that all of a sudden was a female black person. But the thing is here, if you, if we just don't focus about the skin color, my, one of my problems is that they look so dull. They look boring. They look like regular old boring folk. There's nothing special going on. They, they don't have any extraordinary looks. I mean, and people can say what they want about that, but if I'm going to play a video game, I want a character a character that actually looks good. Doesn't matter if it's a dude or if it's a chick. I want something that looks really cool and badass. And this looks like, I mean, this looks like it could be some regular woman you meet at the grocery store. This looks like a bum. This looks like a crackhead. This looks like. Uh, somebody you would forget about two seconds after you meet them on the streets. Uh, she is actually a good actor. I don't have anything bad to say about her. She looks like a fucking alien shipmunk. And I don't know what that is. And, and this, I don't even, this is just f fucked up. Looks like shit. I don't actually understand why someone would design a face like that. Because it looks like shit. She looks stupid and she looks ugly as fuck i'm not saying that i'm a perfect looking guy but i would never ever put myself in a role where i actually try to play some uh, main character in any video game i would be happy with being just uh, an old uh, old uh, ugly fuck that gets killed off in a side quest or whatever create division we have to create division guys have you ever read the bible do you know what Jesus talked about more than anything? Jesus talked about unity. He talked about coming together. Satan divides. Satan wants to keep us separated. Um, so I think it's interesting. And look, I've, I've never, you know, we have tons of black characters in video games the past 20 years, uh, uh, celebrated games, um, um, uh, the, the, the Walking Dead games, the Gears games. There's tons of black characters in video games. But why this sudden... Why this sudden, like every character has to be gay? Why does every character have to be to be black now? And God, that's the thing. They are trying to earn points, social uh, good guy points. The reason is division and it is satanic and it's motivated by the devil because they know BlackRock knows that if we come together, if we actually come together, we could begin to solve things. We could begin to work together and have a better society. But they want to keep us divided like this. They want to keep us like this. And that is why, to bringing, coming full circle to video games now, that is why they're pushing this shit. Yeah. <laughs> like it's almost comical, the trash that's coming out in 2020. And look, I, I'm not saying this stuff is trash because it has black characters in it. I'm saying it's trash because they've taken, you know, uh, if video games were proportionate to the presence of these people as gamers and in society, that makes sense. If 3% yeah. of the population is LGBT, then 3% of the video games should be LGBT. I didn't know it was if that high. I thought it was 1.5%. Then 14% of the video games should be black. But that is not what we're seeing. Every fucking game now is pushing lesbian shit, satanic shit, gay indie stuff black lesbian stuff black lesbian black lesbian black lesbian like why why and guys you have to follow the money it all comes back to blackrock 
And like, I'm seriously going to get kicked off of YouTube if I say who it is. Like, I don't even need to say them. Y'all know the group that is behind this. I don't even need to say them out loud. Mm -hmm. But let's just say that they hate Jesus. I'm going to keep it at that. Um, so guys, <laughs> if you look at all these games, like who plays this stuff? Yeah. And it's these dudes. Look at that shit. It's these useless beta cucks. Yeah. These are the guys who, whenever I get on Reddit and, and I ask a simple question, like, why do we need gay Star Wars? They'll, they ban me and delete me. Or I say, why yep. does every game have a black lesbian protagonist now? They ban me and they delete me. They can't they they can't handle a regular discussion because they are so controlled by their own fragile feelings. They because they are they are weak 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 uh, men weak weak women, and uh, when you actually try to have a conversation with them, they like implode. They they have nothing to offer. They can't speak for their own uh, purpose in life or whatever they their belief is. They are just more or less, I, I guess they're running around angry as fuck all the time, trying to blame society or some other people for their own inner problems and uh, projecting it on towards everybody else that's not like them, I guess, because inclusion, that's just bullshit. They don't include anyone that has the slightest different opinion than themselves. They don't even want to talk to people that have the slightest opinion than themselves. So he's absolutely right about that. And to call this a man, I know it's an AI video, but uh, AI image, but to call this a man, that's, uh, that's pure uh, nonsense. That's not a man. But guys, what do you, what do you not see in video games anymore? You don't see men coming together. And do you know why? Because they hate men. Yep. BlackRock hates masculinity. Why do you think? Why do you think a single military game? Why do you think there's basically no military games anymore? Why do you think there's no games that involve men coming together anymore? Why is everything gay and lesbian and female and homo and woke now? Yep. It's because they hate men coming together. Look at these guys. This is just a picture of men coming together, a picture of men coming together for a common cause. We, you don't, you don't see this in video games anymore because if we saw this in video games, we would begin to see this in real life. Mm. We would realize that, man, our differences aren't really that big of a deal. And we actually can come together and solve things together. So guys, just in closing here, cause I said, this was going to be a short video, um, play. The, the biggest middle finger that you can give these companies right now is to not play this shit. Like all Damn of right. these games are failing miserably right now because That's good. it's, it's primarily men who are gamers. We, we want to see men in games. We want to see men coming together. We want to see men working towards a common purpose and conquering evil. That's all we've ever wanted in a game. And they want to show depraved satanic nonsense like this. So guys, my advice is to play old games, play games made in the far East, uh, uh, um, Tarkov made in Russia, stalker Two. a lot of the Japanese and Chinese games coming out right now are really good. The entire West America is gone. Like Western American developers are gone. Uh, uh, they're, they're too woke. They're too progressive. Mm -hmm. They're under the thumb of BlackRock now. Yeah. See, BlackRock wants to keep us divided. BlackRock does not want, want us to embrace our masculinity. It, they do not want us to come together. They're scared to death of what men could accomplish if we, if we come together. And that's all I'm going to say. And I hope I don't get demonetized for this. I'm out. Hey, guys, this is good. Well, that was a really good... I mean, a short, uh, short video, but he's spot on about the part here. Uh, play more of these games. That's the that's the one way of giving them the middle finger, but also casting your vote towards what kind of games that you want to play. And I mean, who who wants to play these games like Concord? I mean, who want to play these games seriously? I mean, I, I can understand that small kids might want to play them. But the problem is here that they are actually trying to indoctrinate small boys, especially small boys, 
to like this gay stuff. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, agree with it. I think uh, childrens are supposed to choose for themselves and have uh, different options. Not only guide and try to guide them towards something that they might not want from uh, from the start. Um, like when I was a kid, when I was like yay hide and went to preschool or whatever you call it, kindergarten. We we actually got to decide where which room we wanted to play in. And there was a room for our girls with just dolls and shit in it. And there was a room upstairs with lots of big pillows and fun stuff to throw around and act crazy like little boys want to do. And uh, you never saw any boy that said they wanted to go into the girls' room. The only thing, only what, the only time a boy went inside there was when I said I wanted to be in the girls' room. But there, it was because I wanted to be with the girls. I said, I want to be in, in the doll room. Yeah, so, so the teacher led me into the doll room and uh, yeah, you can be here now. I think I was there for an hour or something, two hours maybe. Problem was that there wasn't any girls in there because right at that time, all of the girls were up with the boys. So I had to sit there in that uh, doll room all by myself. But the thing is, I had all the time in the world to figure out if I wanted to play with the dolls. I didn't want to play with any dolls. I sat there miserable as fuck and I couldn't uh, wait to get out of that room, actually. So there's that. So my point with that said is that back in the days when I was a little kid, we, we didn't get a choice back then what we wanted to play with. And I'm pretty sure that if a boy gets to choose between this or this, I'm pretty sure you're gonna pick this. I'm 100% sure he's gonna pick this. So there's no doubt about that. Also, this game. This must be the worst crap that's been released at least the last five years when it comes to first person PvP shooter. These characters are so generic, so woke, so fucking boring, so lame. I, I can't even start to describe how ridiculous I think it is. And I hope this game just burns up and get dropped fast as fuck. I know it's going to be free to play soon, if it's not already is free to, free to play. But I can't wait to look forward what uh, kind of trash uh, scores it's going to get. Because these people who create these games, they shouldn't even be in the gaming industry at all. They just destroy and they just use up a lot of money to create this pile of shit, more or less. And... Uh, Quite frankly, I'm getting so tired of it now. As Andy Pan said, vote with your uh, wallet. Don't give in to these kind of shitty games. Don't even download them if they're free. I mean, by you downloading a free game, that's one vote, more or less, towards uh, the game uh, getting some kind of positive uh, acknowledgement. But I also believe that this is an era that's going to... It's going to decline. It's this. It's like this old saying: "Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times, and hard times create hard men, and hard men create good times." I think that's where we're at now. The hard men is starting to rise up from a new generation, and uh, I think we are looking towards a brighter future. That's my. Uh, that's my take on it.